Nahida is on her way back to the wishing screen very soon and during Genshin Impact's 5.1 update phase 2. Nahida is still a very prominent character within the game and world of Tevat. It's going to be a pretty difficult miss if you decide not to wish for her if you have not already. I would say that Nahida is still one of, if not, the best Dendro support slash sub dps character in the game well she is the dandro archon as she does absolutely way too much for your team that she'll have your jaw drop by the end by using just the first time now let's talk about nahida and what she brings to the table nahida's value comes from her sheer ability to provide dendro application as well as dish out a large amount of damage too and it could not be easier to apply. You take and head onto the field for mere seconds to apply her elemental skill, and you can choose whether or not you want to tap the elemental skill or hold it, and the damage does differ between the two. I'd recommend holding the elemental skill, and it really doesn't take that much longer. Once you hold the elemental skill, you apply to your opponents and you apply something called a tri karma purification this allows you to deal damage over time when you apply reactions onto the dendro that you applied thanks to nahida and it does it kind of quickly in fact after you perform her mental skill you can alt and that will give your team a bunch of buffs depending on your elemental type whether it's pyro Hydro or Electro. All in all, Aida has so much to bring to the table, it's quite ridiculous. In fact, Aida is so simply so easy to build. All you need is some element of mastery to start. With that, you increase your crit rate already for your elemental skill thanks to a passive that you have and you increase the overall damage that you deal because elemental mastery is quite a large part of her kit and you also get to allow your nahida to do dendro thanks to all the dendro reactions and stuff you do even more damage and personally i like to have something like sacrificial fragments so i can use her skill twice and gain some energy recharge back but you won't need that too too much because the Shrine of Maya or her ultimate lasts for a very long time anyway and I never find the need to try to get more energy especially since it is so cheap and is only a 50 energy cost first. Aida is also excellent at C0 with no additional need for constellations. She provides so much support and sub DPS and damage that it's just generally really easy to use her and she's going to be pretty powerful at C0. But in the hypothetical situation in which you find yourself wanting more from Nahida, C2 will offer you the greatest bang for your buck from Nahida's constellations. Of course this is other than C6 where you'll be doing some crazy damage but C2 will allow you to get crit from your reactions which is absolutely massive and which will allow you to deal a large amount of damage as well. In the event that you find yourself looking for an Aida build, this is what I would go for. In fact, this is what I'm running. A weapon with elemental mastery. Could be anything. I personally like the sacrificial fragments, but of course there are multiple other options as well. This usually would provide you with the initial elemental mastery boost that you need. Allow yourself to start hitting, hitting the ground running and you'd go for a pretty good amount of element mastery from just this and also i would go for a well-balanced build with gray mask and or damage bonus and elemental mastery on your sands but if you find yourself really struggling on your elemental mastery instead of the crit ray mask you could chill with an elemental mastery mask since you get a bunch of crit rate for up to 24 percent on your elemental mastery depending on how much you have so I definitely recommend that as well. You have to keep in mind the crit rate that you get is only for your elemental skill. So I mean that's pretty much what you need anyways. Also use the deep wood memories for the artifact sets for any of these that I just stated which will help you reduce the resistance 
Of course, there are other artifact sets that you may use, but this is just the one that's generally easiest to build for her and will allow you to get um, a lot from her, which is really nice. As for her talents, it's so, so easy. Just mainly focus on her mental skill and then the burst. But you do not want to neglect the burst. Trust me, you will improve so much things within your team if you have the burst up always and it will improve your buffs in general, your hydro, your electro, your pyro will all be improved. So that is very important that you level this talent as much as your mental skill too. As easy as that, you now have a working Nahida. Granted that you did do all of the stuff that I said, if you wanted some teams, I'd be sitting here forever showing you guys all the best teams, but I'll show you guys my favorite ones at the end here. So your Nahida should be pretty much ready to go. All you need now is to just level your Nahida to up to 90. That is what I would recommend, or just 80 out of 90, I suppose, because Ellen to Mastery does come within her bonus attributes for Ascension, which is uh, very important. So yeah, don't forget to do that. Again, if your Nahida build does need much more Ellen to Mastery because you didn't reach a specific amount of Ellen to Mastery that you need from her kit, I'd say go for Ellen to Mastery for the mask as well. Um, it's uh, pretty simple. But yeah, that's going to be pretty much it. Hopefully you guys did enjoy. If you guys did, let me know in the comments whether you guys are going to summon for Nahida in her rerun. If not, also let me know in the comments. See you guys in the next one very soon. Goodbye.